with AEW releasing stars and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Asked about a possible fatal four-way match between herself, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Mercedes Monet, Bailey said this to Luca Carbonaro. I would love to see that, and I would say everybody is so cliche, says never say never, but that really is something that I feel we can't go on ending our careers without doing. So, I mean, why not? I don't doubt anything in this world anymore, and I don't doubt anything in the WWE. I think it's something that the fans would love to see, and I think it's something that we need to do to be able to sleep at night when we're 75 years old, you know? Mentioning her upcoming match against former WWE star Alicia Fox, Mickey James told WrestleZone, I also haven't been in the ring since my match with Trinity. I want to be able to deliver because I've been so busy. I'm putting her together. I've been working with OVW behind the scenes with their women's division and stuff. I'm working on how to cultivate that and do some cool things there. Obviously, I have the last match musical around the corner. I mob so hard on the daily, so I hope I'm ready for this match. Talking about the creative direction of Cody Rhodes heading into WrestleMania 40, former head writer for WWE and collaborator with The Rock, Brian Gewertz, said this to ESPN. Would the fans be as adamant Cody needs to finish his story if he didn't win the Royal Rumble? Once he won the Royal Rumble, then I think there was a certain element of, hey, don't screw with us now. You can't dangle the Royal Rumble win and then take it away. And I think everyone, Rock included, was like, yeah, they're right. We should continue this story as it naturally would play out if this were real life if this were real life and he won the rumble and he didn't win last year's wrestlemania there's literally no logical reason even though you could try to make one up why wouldn't he want to face roman and win the title Going over a role he was considered for, Will Ospreay told IGN, I was in New Japan when the Assassin's Creed film came out. They wanted to use some of my photos from New Japan to help advertise the movie coming over. They said if there was going to be an Assassin's Creed 2, I might be able to do some stunt work in it, and I got excited. Nothing ever came of it, but I'd love to be a part of Assassin's Creed. Discussing her achievements in pro wrestling, Becky Lynch said this to CBS Sports. I'm the first woman to win the main event of WrestleMania. I've won every single match there is to win in WWE. I've won every championship there is to win in WWE. I continue to break down barriers and to break through glass ceilings all while being a mother, all while being a best-selling author. If I quit tomorrow, I am still the greatest woman to have ever done it. But I'm not quitting tomorrow. I have a WrestleMania match that needs to happen. I'm going to take that title from her. Do I need to prove that I still have it? Okay, good. I did plant that seed of doubt. That seed grew into a tree. But what's great is that when people believe in me, I'm good. But when people doubt me, I am great. In fact, I'm not just great. I am an unstoppable monster. Despite having issues with CM Punk, WWE commentator Corey Graves said this regarding their relationship today, telling Wrestle Binge, I am proud to report that it's all water under the bridge. I bumped into him briefly the night of Survivor Series backstage, but it was chaotic. He had just come back. Everything was at 11 at the moment. The day of the Royal Rumble at Tropicana Field, I actually got to pull him aside for a few minutes and we cleared the air. We had a nice long chat. We both apologized for some things over the years and realized this is where we both belong. This is where we both want to be. It's been a really exciting time for me personally to be able to rekindle a friendship that meant so much to me over the years. I'm truly as excited to have Punk back here under the WWE banner as just about anybody.
addressing the possibility of making a return to in-ring action, Corey Graves said in that same interview. I could give you five different answers for that, but I can honestly say my focus has really shifted. I got cleared. It was almost two years ago now, and it was in the midst of a lot of different things were happening, professionally and personally. And I was sort of looking for something to scratch that itch, but since I've slid over into the now lead role on Friday Night Smackdown in the commentary booth, that's actually provided me with a lot more motivation and a new skill to learn and to focus on. In a video on X, Gunter can be seen attacking Chad Gable on Raw. Touching on how the bloodline story in WWE has developed over the years, Paul Heyman told The Ringer, I'm a huge proponent of writing the last page of the script first. It's always to the advantage of long-term storytelling. I don't think it was ever done better ever than the Brian De Palma directed movie Carlito's Way because the very first frame of the movie tells you the ending. The first scene in that movie is the end of the movie. Then you're taken on a ride with these characters that are so layered. The audience is truly emotionally invested in them to such a degree that when you know the movie is coming to the conclusion, you have forgotten what the ending is, and you're rooting for Carlito. Even though you were just told less than two hours ago, he's going to die on that train platform at the hands of this person in front of his soon-to-be bride. The magnificence of that storytelling is, to this day, so dramatically underappreciated. I've always been of the belief that the launch of the story is the first push toward the conclusion. The finish is everything. All that being said, I think it would suggest the ending of this story has already been rewritten multiple times because the world has changed since the inception of the Bloodline story. Therefore, what was a clear vision of how this should play out almost four years ago changed along the way based on not only the audience's investment in the characters and the stories, but the world itself, society itself, pop culture itself, sports culture itself has all changed. And now we can see the trajectory that we've been on takes us so much further than we ever initially imagined. Providing a health update on his brother Jeff, Matt Hardy said this to WrestleZone. He's doing okay. Yeah, his vision issues are good. He had to have surgery on his nose. He had some issues with his sinuses, so he had surgery. So he's still got three or four more weeks before he will be cleared to return. Going over where the Motor City Machine Guns may wind up following their departure from TNA Wrestling, PW Insider reported that within TNA, there's been more of a realization that the guns are gone, where before some hoped they might still return to work some dates. There are some in TNA who believe the guns will sign with AEW, and that will be their landing spot. As AEW released some stars, NoDQ.com wrote that according to Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com, the following names were released from AEW on Monday. The Tate Twins, aka Dalton Castle's boys, Anthony Henry, Stu Grayson, Dasha Flintes. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com reported the following names as being released. Gravity, Parker Boudreau, Jose the Assistant, Dora Joel, Slim J. Johnson noted the following about the releases. In speaking to several sources, we are told AEW is currently evaluating their talent roster and making cuts to benefit both the company and the talents. The belief is the released talents would be 100% free agents immediately. Thank you. 
comparing up and coming NXT star Trick Williams to John Cena, Shawn Michaels mentioned this during a watch along for WWE. I don't know if it affects you sometimes, but John was in a position where he was the champion. But I think people weren't sure if he was ready yet. Never let that stuff stop you. He never let that kind of stuff, that doubt, slow him down. He knew within himself that he was ready to take on the best. Whether it was Triple H, myself, Undertaker, John had a lot to prove to a lot of people. You and him are similar in that respect. Sometimes it's going to have to take you having to mow down guy after guy after guy to earn that respect from your peers. That's how you do it. In these big time matches, one after another, just clicking them off, that's exactly what he did. Criticizing Roman Reigns for his limited work schedule in WWE, Becky Lynch said this to ABC Philly. It's going to be hard, but that's why they're the champs. For Roman, he's probably doubling his work that he's done over the last year because he hardly ever shows up to work. It's going to be real tough on him. It's going to be a lot hard on him. Cody is used to fighting. Seth Rollins is used to being a fighting champion. I think Roman Reigns is going to have the hard time here. Reacting to the sex trafficking lawsuit against Vince McMahon and WWE, Ronda Rousey told News Nation, It's not surprising. I can tell you the reason why nobody else is speaking out is because they know that there will be negative repercussions if they say anything about the company that the company doesn't like. Everybody is being held hostage by their careers, but since I don't plan on going back there unless they make some very major changes, I feel free to say whatever I want, which I've always felt that way way. I don't really care if they have me back or not. I can wrestle wherever I want to wrestle and the truth should be told. Explaining how his appearance and match on AEW Collision against Adam Copeland came to be, Matt Cardona said on the Major Wrestling Figure podcast, I heard there was a Cope open. Adam Copeland, a mentor of mine. I'm a former Edgehead. I heard he had an open challenge. A Cope open defending that TNT championship. I said, you know what? I'm always ready. It was a very stressful day. Very stressful. Not much time to prepare for having your dream match. It was an incredible moment and I think it was a career highlight. Talking about the lack of surprises in pro wrestling these days, Goldberg noted on the Drinking Bros podcast, Hulk Hogan once told me, make him pay for it. Make him wait. Don't show up every Monday on Raw. Don't show up every Thursday on Thunder. Don't show up every Friday. Make him wait for you. Make him anticipate. I remember the day when we wouldn't announce people showing up, and they just show up and people went berserk. Now, it's all predetermined when you're going to be there. There are no surprises, really. They use them to draw. Going over a possible return to WWE for Bo Dallas, Ringside News wrote that recently Peacock aired the Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal documentary, shedding light on Wyatt's career and featuring interviews with wrestling icons such as Hulk Hogan, John Cena, Becky Lynch, Triple H, and Bo Dallas himself. The documentary concluded with a cryptic teaser, hinting at a possible return for Dallas as the camera panned out from Wyatt's lantern and a voice urged viewers to run. A a phrase synonymous with Wyatt's WWE persona. This teaser was followed by the silhouette of a figure, leaving fans speculating about Dallas's future in the company. According to reports from Fightful Select, this teaser indeed signifies Bo Dallas's eventual return to WWE television. Those specific details regarding his comeback date and storyline plans remain undisclosed. Ringside News saw clarification from a senior member of the WWE creative team regarding Fightful's report on Bo Dallas's potential return. The response confirmed Dallas's continued contract with WWE and revealed that there were indeed pitches for his television return, though they never materialized into fruition. We've had Bo under contract for a while. It's a possibility, but we never end up going forward with it.
When it comes to Roxanne Perez being called up from NXT to the main roster, Ringside News wrote that according to insights from Fightful Select's Corey Brennan, Perez's trajectory within WWE is generating significant buzz behind the scenes. Despite numerous appearances on the main roster, including notable showings in back-to-back -back Royal Rumble matches in 2023 and 2024, Perez's ascent has been steadily gaining momentum. Brennan reports that Perez has left a lasting impression on major officials with each main roster appearance, leading to speculation that her transition to the main roster is inevitable. While many fans eagerly anticipate Perez's elevation to the main roster, sources within NXT reveal a desire for her to remain on the brand for the time being. This decision stems from a desire to further develop Perez's compelling new heel persona, which has garnered widespread acclaim from officials. In fact, there are even voices advocating for Perez to capture the NXT Women's Championship at Friday's Stand and Deliver event. Addressing speculation surrounding Perez's role in the absence of her former tag team partner and rival Cora Jade, who has been sidelined with a torn ACL, NXT insiders clarified that plans for Perez's character evolution were in motion prior to Jade's injury. While the two were initially slated to reunite as heels, Perez has seamlessly transitioned into her new persona, earning praise for her professionalism and dedication to her craft, described as professional beyond her years. By one NXT source, Perez's potential appears limitless at just 22 years old. As she continues to captivate audiences with her in-ring prowess and magnetic presence, Perez's journey in WWE promises to be one of continued growth and success. Mentioning a change made under Triple H that was not present when Vince McMahon was around, Corey Graves told Wrestle Binge, the biggest change has been the amount of freedom that the talent has, myself included. I'm not micromanaged. Michael Cole is no longer micromanaged. And of course, there are going to be rules and guidelines. It's just no longer a constant stream of consciousness. Talking about the reason for the releases in AEW, Ringside News wrote, While speculation arose regarding potential financial difficulties prompting these releases, PW Insider offers a different perspective. According to their report, the releases were not driven by financial constraints, but rather stemmed from a strategic reorganization of how AEW utilizes its roster. The company aimed to allow talent the freedom to pursue other opportunities while keeping the door open for potential future use. Notably, the Tate Twins are now unrestricted free agents, despite having approximately 16 months remaining on their AEW contracts. This aligns with the broader approach of granting released talent the flexibility to explore new ventures. Touching on his release from AEW, Slim J said this on X, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have worked for AEW. Unfortunately, yesterday was no April Fool's joke. I appreciate Aria Davari for always bringing my name up and believing in me. Caprice Coleman, you always put me over, as did William Barron's. Thank you. Thank you to the fans that supported me. My gimmick was trash. I get that. I knew that. My work wasn't, though. I worked my shoot job through both contracts with AEW. My role there was to act rich. I've always been far from that in real life. Promise that. All I wanted to do once I was signed was to get my wife and daughter out of the sh hole we live in. They're my everything by far. I failed. Does it mean I quit? Not at all. Mouths to feed and I'm broke ASF. So I'm looking for a second, second job. Stop sleeping on me.
Also reacting to his release from AEW, Anthony Henry of the Work Horseman wrote on X, The amount of support I am receiving during this very difficult time is amazing and I appreciate all of it. I don't know what is next for me. I don't know if wrestling is something I still want to pursue. I am devastated. Regardless, I am always a Work Horseman. Henry also posted a picture of the Work Horseman shirt being one of the top selling tees on AEW's online shop as he wrote oh the irony and this was your pro wrestling news update I hope you're all having a great day thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all later